Thank you, Honorable Speaker, and I rise to support this committee. This committee's report, the Committee on Public Debt, and particularly, Honorable Speaker, thank the Chair, Honorable Shuri, and uh, his very able Vice Chair, the Honorable Makali Mulu, who, Honorable Chair, when I last passed by Kituye, Kitui City, I heard he's a prospective governor in the county of Kitui. And I would tell the people of Kitui, they would never have a better governor if that time ever came than the Honorable Makali Mulu. And uh, he has done very well, not just as the vice chair to Honorable Shuria, together with Honorable Shuria in this debt uh, committee, but also in our budget and appropriations committee. And let me take this opportunity to thank them, together with all the other members of the public debt committee, including the very agile and able member for Kinangop, the Honorable Kwenya Thuku, who has been a very active member of this committee and making sure that indeed they do their work in oversighting our public debt position in the country and making sure that they put the National Treasury on its toes and ensuring that the National Treasury, as they have put in this report, Honorable Speaker, the National Treasury is not only submitting all the reports that they ought to uh, submit to the House, but also doing so in a timely manner. And Honorable Speaker, I have noted many of the observations and uh, recommendations that the committee have made in their report. And particularly, Honorable Speaker, those that relate to the reports under Section 31, 1, and 3 of the PFM Act of 2012. And Honorable Speaker, these reports are indeed very critical, not just to the workings of the House and the Debt Committee, but also the Budget and Appropriations Committee, as well as the Finance Committee, because these reports will help to inform the House, and particularly these committees as they interact with the country's finances, the level of indebtedness of the country, and be able to measure whether in the subsequent financial year uh, the country will be able to enter into more debt, uh, into higher or lower levels of debt than it was in a particular year that uh, the National Treasury should be reporting. Honorable Speaker, it is important, as the committee has noted in its recommendations, that these reports are brought to the House on a quarterly basis. Honorable Speaker, there is a reason why the drafters of the PFM Act of 2012 uh, require that these reports are submitted on a quarterly basis, Honorable Speaker, uh, because, as I mentioned, Honorable Speaker, the timely submission and uh, consumption of reports by the House will help to inform ourselves and the country where we are in terms of our debt level so that we don't find ourselves in a position where we continuously continue getting into debt problems without knowledge because we don't have timely and accurate information at the right time. Honorable Speaker, I must re-emphasize, as the committee has uh, emphasized in its report, that the National Treasury, upon adoption of this report, must ensure that all these reports are submitted from the first to the fourth quarter of every year in line with the fiscal or calendar year uh, of our financial year from July 1st to the end of June, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, I also particularly noted a recommendation by the committee that says that upon adoption of this report, the National Treasury should prioritize the sourcing and disbursement of concessionary finance. And this concession of finance, Honorable Speaker, contains what they have noted, a grant element, implying that larger borrowing can be sourced within uh, minimum impact, with minimum impact on debt sustainability by reducing the refinancing and interest rate risk. Honorable Speaker, I note this particular recommendation because as it is today, we have had a problem, Honorable Speaker, and in the supplementary budget uh, one that we passed last week, Honorable Speaker, and, and uh, whose appropriations bill you passed on Tuesday, members will remember us noting that within that supplementary estimates bill, a figure of about 143 to 145 billion is on account of the financing risk that comes with exchange rate fluctuations, Honorable Speaker. In, within this uh, calendar year or this financial year, Honorable Speaker, and it's therefore important that the National Treasury seeks to pursue loans that are more concessional in nature so that we enjoy 
those lower interest rates, and we also don't expose ourselves to the financing risks and interest rate risk that we have previously exposed ourselves to. Honorable Speaker, this report, Honorable Speaker, will also help not only to inform the country, uh, the House, but the country also. I had occasion this morning, Honorable Speaker, to interact with a young Kenyan, a trader in Yamakima, who told me that she was keenly listening to one of the local FM stations. And I have no fear in mentioning the station because it's Kameme FM, Honorable Speaker. And this Kameme FM, a presenter who I actually know hails from my constituency and is illiterate. Because he's a class 8 dropout who has no understanding of anything finance. And the presenter was misinforming the country and listeners on Kameme FM that this country has borrowed to the tune of 4.5 trillion in this financial honorable speaker. As you, a young trader in Yamakima had the logic to decipher that if our budget is in the region of 3 point something trillion, there is no way the country would have borrowed 4.5 trillion within a period of one year. Honorable Speaker, that is why the National Treasury must ensure that these reports are brought to the House and to the Public Debt Committee on a timely basis. Because the moment these reports come to the House, they help to inform Kenyans on the right debt position of the country so that we avoid situations where illiterate radio presenters like those ones in Kamehameha FM are misinforming Kenyans. And I was speaker, you would understand why a presenter, based on the ownership of Kameme FM, why a presenter would be intent on deliberately misinforming the country on the level of debt and the level of indebtedness that this current administration has gotten into, Honorable Speaker. And Honorable Speaker, factual and accurate information in accounting and in economics is critical in decision making. And even this House will not be able to make decisions. Even the National Treasury will not be able to make credible decisions without factual, accurate, and timely reporting and information at the right time, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, the committee, if you look at uh, their recommendation 8.8, .8, also says that the National Treasury should address factors that affect timely and full disbursement of loan financing and submit a report to the National Assembly within 60 days of the adoption of this report, indicating actions taken to increase the efficient disbursement of loan financing. Honorable Speaker, let me take this opportunity again to commend the Public Debt Committee. And it tells you that the members of this Public Debt Committee, and Honorable Speaker, you can see them. Unlike other committees where their reports are debated and members are not there, the chair is here, the vice chair is here, and I must commend them again for their able leadership. Honorable Speaker, yourself, presiding this session, you are this debt committee. The Honorable Dawood is a member of this committee. The Honorable Kwenya Dhuku is a member of the committee. Honorable Speaker, it is good that we, have, we are debating. I saw the Honorable Makilapa, I think he has stepped out also who is also a member of this committee. And I am saying, yes, and uh, uh, Abraham Kirwa, it tells you that these members of this committee have been diligent in their work, and I must commend them. Because unlike many other committees, Honorable Speaker, where reports are tabled, the chair tables the report, is, uh, has no seconder. You saw the chair has moved, the vice chair was there and at least not less than half of the membership of the committee are in the House to debate their report. It tells you the diligence, Honorable Speaker. And I speak to this uh, particular recommendation on 8.8, .8, Honorable Speaker, on the slow disbursement of loan financing, because as a former chair of the Budget and Appropriations Committee and the Honorable Dindi Nyoro, if he had also been patient after doing his uh, business to sit in the House, and also be able to consume part of these things because they affect our budgeting process. And the Honorable Makali Mulu will uh, bear me witness. 
at the time I chaired the budget committee, one of the key issues that would always raise was the slow disbursement of loan financing. And in fact, our loan books carry such huge amounts of loans that are not being disbursed on a timely basis. Some, the government of Kenya also has not given the counterpart funding and the amounts remaining in the loan books not being able to implement projects, Honorable Speaker, because of the counterpart funding. And Honorable Speaker, I will really want to ask the Honorable Shuri and his committee to ensure that indeed within the 60 days that you have recommended uh, upon adoption of this report, that the National Treasury informs the House what are the handicaps that makes them not be able to absorb uh, debt financing, some of which, Honorable Speaker, at times come with penalties when you do not consume this money on a timely basis, Honorable Speaker. Two, Honorable Speaker, Kenyans who borrowed this money or who the government borrowed this money on their behalf are not able to enjoy the services and the goods that have been provided through that timely disbursement of this money, Honorable Speaker. And therefore, I'll be very keen uh, in the course of early next year, and in fact, the 60 days, if we're able to adopt this report within this session, will fall around the time that we resume uh, from the long recess and just in time uh, before the annual estimates for the next financial year. And I want to encourage the Public Debt Committee to ensure that even as we scrutinize the budget estimates for next year, and even as you start working on the BPS, that you have this report so that you are able to interrogate even the figures that you come to before you for the next financial year with information as to what are the handicaps that uh, uh, ensure, or rather that slow down the full disbursement of our loan financing. Honorable Speaker, let me conclude, Honorable Speaker, by correcting the misnomer, not that just being perpetuated by illiterate radio presenters at Kamehameha FM, but what is also used in political funerals and political gatherings on the level of our indebtedness. And indeed, Honorable Speaker, only this Monday or Tuesday, on Tuesday actually, on Monday, Honorable Speaker, Honorable Speaker, I hear there's a point of order, and I truly hope that order. the person asking the point of order can Order, indicate leader. on what standing order they are rising. <laughs> Honourable Member, relax. I've heard you. What's your point about that? Which standing order? Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Which I'm a journalist order? by profession. Yes. I went to school. You can differ on opinions, but not to be called an illiterate, uh, Mr. Speaker. All of us have different ways in which we air our opinions, but for our party leader, oh, sorry, majority. <laughs> we don't have party I'm leader sorry. here. <laughs> for, to, I stood because I, I, I did the best at Eges FM. That is why they believed in, in me, the, the community, so what's your and made me the woman rep. You should withdraw that name of uh, illiterate. Please, no one is an illiterate. Even our old women in the village didn't go to the to school, but at least they told us to to this is wrong and this is right. Girls, keep yourself safe to get a right man. Say no, even if it means yes, but don't uh, allow yourself to be used. So let him withdraw that Very statement, well, Mr. Hard. Speaker. Thank you, Honourable Speaker. <clears throat> you know the Honourable Doris Donya. I didn't know she's a journalist. <laughs> and uh, she knows I have tremendous respect for journalists. Uh, but I meant that that particular radio presenter is financially illiterate and is a fact of life. I know him. He's from my village. And when I tell you he's financially illiterate, trust me and believe me that he's financially illiterate. Honorable Speaker, if I go back to what I was saying, because there is that misnomer on the level of our indebtedness, but also, Honorable Speaker, to commend the National Treasury and the current administration, Honorable Speaker. Because when His Excellency the President said that this administration would do uh, responsible borrowing, Honorable Speaker, uh, he meant business. And when he told us last year during the campaigns that he was a man on a mission, many people took it for granted. But William Ruto is indeed a man on a mission, and he has proved he's a man on a mission to transform Kenya and make sure that our country's economy gets back to its feet. 
Honorable Speaker, let me take this opportunity also to commend the World Bank that uh, at the management level, Honorable Speaker, has now confirmed, Honorable Speaker, that they will be granting us about $12 billion, $12 billion over the next three years, Honorable Speaker. And that, Honorable Speaker, is besides the almost uh, 900, almost a billion dollars that we are also getting from IMF, Honorable Speaker. And this is the concessional financing that the debt committee is talking about, Honorable Speaker, so that we are able to retire most of our expensive commercial debt into this concession of financing and be able to uh, reestablish a stable economy that will work for the majority of Kenyans. And I want to believe, Honorable Speaker, with the kind of leadership that we see under the Kenya Kwanzaa administration and the able leadership of the public debt committee by the Honorable Shurie, uh, deputized by the Honorable Makali Mulu, they will be able to ensure that our public debt levels are properly managed and within levels that are sustainable for our country and that uh, debt that will also go towards financing actual projects. And I must commend the committee because, again, and Honorable Makali Mulu, we remember when we served with him in the uh, Budget and Appropriation Committee, we always insisted in all our reports that all our debt must be traceable to specific projects. And I see the Public Debt Committee now being a standalone uh, committee dealing with public debt. You should now be able to ensure that the National Treasury is able to specifically drill down each of the debts that we borrow in this country to particular projects and ensure that there are projects that have a return to the people of Kenya and projects that will be able eventually to be able to pay back uh, the level, the debt that we incur as a nation. Honorable Speaker, with those many remarks, I beg to support this report and uh, ask members to support as I congratulate all the members of the Public Debt Committee. This indeed, Honorable Speaker, have proven uh, that unlike many other committees of this House, that these are very diligent legislators who know what their work in committees is.